Okay, this is behind the scenes. My pump broke and it happened right before Shabbos and I wasn't able to troubleshoot. So all my plants died. <laughs> happens, this is what happens. That's why you should have an extra pump. And now this is what it looked like. It's, this is what happens. This is growing indoors for about six months. And this is all just mineral buildup and a little bit of algae that got in there. And so now I'm taking this apart and going to use a little bit of citric acid and it will clean this up. You can see how just dirty it is, right? It's gonna be cleaned up. It's gonna be nice and white when I'm done cleaning it. I'm gonna take it apart piece by piece and then soak it in the bathtub with some citric acid. You're gonna clean this up. It's actually perfect timing. Those plants, they were pretty much overgrown and I wasn't eating them. I was picking the basil, but the basil got bugs on it. It was starting to get to a place where it's over. It's the overtime on the hydroponics. So it's time to clean up and start anew. The good news is that's exactly what I was doing last week. I decided to finally plant a bunch more seedlings and they have already sprouted. Here they are. Here are all the seedlings ready to go into the new system and I uh, can't wait to start growing again. These should be ready probably in about three weeks. So in about a week, I will be able to put them in here. So I'm constantly growing. And the key to stay growing is to just keep the seedlings going. You know, you do a rotation where you always have fresh plants. And I wasn't doing that so much and I was letting them overgrow because I was getting busy, but I'm back. You just bring yourself right back to the baseline, which is from scratch, start over again. And that's the great thing about this. If you have an infestation outside, it's not so easy just to get rid of it because you're in the elements, but indoors, you can stop all of it and start over. That is one thing that I really like about indoor growing. Growing has always been a deeply spiritual experience for me. And as I'm looking inside, you know, outside, it looked okay. The plants looked okay. But look what was going on in the inside. Look at all this. You never know, right? You just never know what's going on inside with some people. Some people look perfect on the outside and the inside, they're like this. It's hard to tell. It's written that it takes an entire year to get to know someone, to know their character, to know whether or not they are true and would be a good friend to you. As you meet new people in the world, consider that the exterior that they have, whatever is going on on their outside, could be a false representation of what's going on on the inside. So we are getting to the bottom of this, and this is it. This is the heart of the matter. This is what it looks like after the growing season it just needs to be cleaned out so it's a thing but i have grown so much produce in this again i've mentioned before it's about mastering whatever system you have i'm not promoting this system although i've used it for two years and i really do like it i know how it can possibly fail and what to do so i've been troubleshooting throughout these two years so anyway i'm used to this when i like it so whatever system you get the key to anything in life is mastering that thing. Stick with your one system and really learn it and it will be so much easier for you to grow indoors. Okay, I messed up again. <laughs> I forgot to pump all the water out before I took it apart. So now I've got this bottom part with a bunch of water. So I've been taking buckets of the water out and throwing it over my balcony. <laughs> and so now I'm at the end. I'm going to pour all this water out and catch it on camera. the water to help take the staining of the minerals away. So you can use citric acid, but I think what works even better and quicker is still wool. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to scrub this thing because I would have to add so much citric acid to this and I don't want to do that. And it's already done a lot on the bottom, so I'm going to scrub the rest of this and clean this up 
and get it ready for the plants that are growing. I've got lettuce and kale and arugula. They've all sprouted and they're ready to go into the system. Here we have it all cleaned up and ready. It's like brand new again. I'm so excited. debating whether or not I want to keep this under the balcony. It's not made for outside, but if it's out of the elements, it can certainly be left outside. The only thing is, it's going to get cold. And I don't really clean this out, but once every six months. So the next time I'm due to clean it out is going to be around January. It will be freezing outside. The plants won't make it. No, it's too cold here to even leave anything outside. So. This is gonna go back inside. But that's an option if you have a space that's outdoor and you have warm weather. You could do this as long as it's protected. Here they are. Here are all the seedlings ready to go into the new system and uh, can't wait to start growing again. These should be ready probably in about three weeks. I need to do a little update on these tomato plants. In our last episode, I had to pull one of them. It was just dead. So we have two left and I've been feeding them the Fox Farm Grow Big and it's brought so many flowers, but I realized that I should have been feeding them. Big bloom. As soon as you see flowers, you're supposed to do big bloom. So I've got some big bloom and I'm going to be feeding them aggressively this week. And what do we have here? Let's see. Yes, look what we see. Can you see that? Yeah, we're gonna water them. She went, look at the look at the tomatoes. Look. look at them. Do you see? Tomato. Can you see tomato? <laughs> do. do good tomato. There's a bunch in here, they're hidden. Oh, I see some down there. Oh, gosh, I'm so excited. I cannot wait. Okay, hold this. Let me go get the water. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to add... Actually, can you help him hold this while I feed the plants? I'm gonna hold your penguin. I'm supposed to use, you know, like a four tablespoons per gallon, but what I do is, and okay. wait, you gotta so I'm gonna hold, hold I'm gonna hold this and you're gonna hold yeah. the water with two hands, okay? Ready? All right, so that's Good, two hands, heavy. Good. Get the whole family in on the action. Okay. I'm really excited for this big bloom. You know, if everything works out, <laughs> we'll see even ways to go. Oh, look at this. Got bat guano. Does anyone know what bat guano is? It's bat. Yeah, that's yeah. food for the plants. It's food for the plants. Okay, you need to rinse all that off. It's so gross, right? But it's so good for the plants. They love it. It's like candy to the plants, bat guano. Plant candy. That's right. Just, just knowing it's brown, too, it just kind of gives me a creepy feeling. Okay, can you... <laughs> Put the water over All in here. Alright, we gotta go to the next plant, babe. Yeah, that one. That one. Let's go to that one. Gentle with the plant. It's so lovely. So let's see what's in here. Earthworm casting, bat and seabird guano. That's a nice way of saying. Is this guano poop? Yes. From that. Bat and a seabird poop. Rock phosphate. Sulfate of potash, magnesium, and kelp. You know, it's great. All these nutrients are going into those tomatoes. They're going to go into our bodies. You know, so it's like a recycling here. Oh. Nutrients. Okay, watch out. So 
such a nice day today. It's a perfect day. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> 